counting there are two Z orbits on binary quartic quantum forms and applications. Well, um, thank you very much for being here. Um, so before, before I talk about binary quartic forms, let me um, try and provide some motivation. And for motivation, we'll turn to the space of binary quadratic forms. So let U be the space of binary quadratic forms. Uh, we'll look at the integral binary quadratic forms, which are things of the form ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared, where a, b, and c are integers. So the group gl to z acts in this space by linear change of variables, as it acts in the space of binary forms of any degree. And the way it acts is if you have gamma an element in the group, and if f of x comma y is a form, then gamma dot f is f of x comma y dot gamma. Um, so the ring of invariance of this space is particularly nice, of this action is particularly nice. It's generated by the discriminant, which of course we know as um, the discriminant of this form is b squared minus 4ac. So any invariant quantity under this group is going to be a polynomial in the discriminant. Now um, Gauss studied this action quite closely. He actually studied the action of SL2z inside, uh, inside GL2z acting on this space. And, um, and what he proved was that the group, uh, the, sorry, the set of um, SL2z orbits on UZ having discriminant equal to some fixed integer d, which is not 0, uh, this, this set is finite. And he gave it the structure of an abelian group. Um, so let's we denote the cardinality of this by HD, and today we know HD is a narrow class number of the quadratic order that has discriminant D. So one of the questions that Gauss asked about this was, how does HD grow on average? So, so for instance, in the negative discriminant case, suppose we sum uh, HD as D goes from minus x to 0. What is this? How does this grow as a function of x? And it's it was a theorem proved by Mertens in 1874 that this grows as a power like x to the 3 by 2. And uh, the constant in front of it is pi divided by 18 zeta 3. So the case of positive discriminant binary quadratic forms was uh, the analogous question was answered by Siegel in 1944 quite a while later. And he, and he showed that suppose you sum d going between 0 and x, hd. But um, here the natural thing turns out to be that you have to weight hd with some other quantity, which I'll just call the regulator of d. When d is square free, for instance, this is the regulator of the quadratic field with discriminant d. And this grows as pi squared divided by 18 zeta 3, x to the 3 by 2. So for bind, so I mean these formulae tell us, for instance, how the narrow class group of quadratic fields uh, behave, how the size behaves. So in the case of binary cubic forms, the analogous question was answered by Davenport. in 1951, where he summed up the analogous class numbers with bounded discriminant. And, and, and that work has had some amazing applications, uh, among them being the, the famous Davenport and Heilbronn theorems. Where they first count cubic fields having bounded discriminant. And also um, tell us what the, they also count the average number of three torsion elements in quadratic fields. Uh, so they average 
the size of uh, the three torsion in quadratic fields KD. And in fact, this is the, it's the same as the, as what's predicted by the cohen lenzer heuristics, though that, that came later. OK, so, so now we look at binary quartic forms. So binary cubic forms uh, was like binary quadratic forms in that the action of GL to Z in the space of binary cubic forms, the ring of invariance is generated by just one element, again, the discriminant. So in the case of binary quadratic forms, this is no longer the case. Uh, we denote the space of integral binary quadratic forms by VZ, and as before the group GL to Z acts on it, and given a binary quartic form f, we can attach two invariants to it, i of f, which is a degree 2 polynomial in the coefficients of f, and j of f, which is a degree 3 polynomial in the coefficients of f. And um, at least over the complex numbers, i and j generate the ring of invariants. For instance, the discriminant of f, which is also an invariant quantity, can be written as 4i cubed minus j squared divided by 27. And um, the analogous quantity to HD is, is what we'll call HIJ, which is um, the size of uh, the set of GL to Z orbits on VZ having invariance I and J. In general work of uh, Boreal and Harishandra implies in particular HIJ is is finite as long as the discriminant of i and j is non-zero. And we'd like to ask and answer a question that's analogous to this. So to do that, first we have to order binary quartic forms, and we choose to do it by, by height. So we define the height of f by the height of its invariance. Uh, and what we, what we want to ensure is that the number of uh, points having a given height uh, or bounded height is finite. So, so, so we want something like the max of i and j. But of course, we um, i is a degree 2 polynomial, while j is a degree 3 polynomial. We want the height to behave well under scaling. So we look at the absolute value of i cubed and j squared. And in fact, we'll divide this by 4, because that makes the answers nicer. And we'll define this to be the height. And then the analogous question is, what is the sum um, as of uh, things of bounded, how many GL to Z orbits of binary quadratic forms exist which have bounded height? And as before, we'll separate in the case, uh, uh, we'll separate the cases where the forms have positive and negative discriminant. And along with, uh, so uh, my advisor, Manjul Bhargava, uh, and I, we, uh, we show that this quantity grows like a constant times x to the 5 by 6, where in the positive discriminant case, this constant turns out to be um, 12 divided by 135, 0, 2 times x. Uh, and in the negative discriminant case, it's 32 divided by 135, 0, 2. Well, say a quick word about how this is proven. It's it sort of it begins in the same way as the proof of Davenport, which is already right, we want to count GL to Z orbits on VZ. So let's look at the space of all binary quadratic forms with real coefficients. Let's take the ones that have height less than x, and let's construct a fundamental domain for the action of GL to Z on this set. And we'll call that fundamental domain Fx. Uh, plus minus for positive or negative discriminant. And now suppose we intersect Fz with um, space of integral binary quartic forms. Sorry, I should mention that we here only look at irreducible binary quartic forms. 
you're looking at binary quadiforms that are reducible over Q. And count the number of points in this, then that's our answer. And the problem, as usual, is that uh, Fx is going to be non-compact. It's going to have a cusp. And dealing with that cusp can be difficult, but using uh, an averaging method of, uh, of Mundell's, this proof follows quite easily. This average met averaging method was first developed to count quartic fields uh, by Mundell. OK, so now that we have this theorem, let me um, briefly describe an, an application. I'll do it here. So it's a result of Birch and Sunit and Dyer. that um, suppose you have an elliptic curve E, a rational elliptic curve, given by the equation y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b, then elements in the two Selma group of E are in one-to-one -one correspondence with binary quartic forms, uh, integral binary quartic forms, uh, and that's important, um, with invariance a and b, it's not quite a and b, it's up to some multiplying them by some powers of 2 and 3, but basically a and b, modulo the action of p gl to q. So, so gl to q doesn't actually act on this because it can take an integral form and take it to a rational form, but, but it gives an equivalence relation and we want to count equivalence classes here. And so what we can do is we can use we can use that theorem, which counts GL to Z orbits. And we can um, take GL to Z, which is the same as PGL to Z orbits on VZ. And then we can weight them uh, with some appropriate quantity, uh, quantity so that the weighted number of PGL to Z orbits turns out to be equal to the number of PGL to Q equivalence classes. And then we can use that theorem along with a sieve that allows us to go from just counting orbits to counting weighting, weighted orbits. And that, and that allows us to average the size of the two Selma group in elliptic curves um, leading to the theorem. So when elliptic curves over Q are ordered by height, then the average size of the two Selma groups. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so the same sort of height on binary quadric forms, where we uh, height this by the maximum of a cubed and b squared by four, we put the same height on elliptic curves, and when we do this, uh, the average size of the three Selma group is is 3, which implies that the average rank is uh, less than or equal to 3 halves. Um, and uh, now we're working to see whether these methods work over number fields and, and function fields as well. I, I'll stop now. I'm, I'm out of time. Okay.